This tutorial is part of my course on Udemy. Check out the description for more info. Hey there, now we'll be learning about variables. In the previous lecture, we learned what functions are and how we can use them. We also learned about passing in arguments to a function. Now an argument that you pass in is basically a value. Now there is a way to store these values before directly passing them in into a function. So to store these values, we can use variables. A variable, as I said, stores a value. The value can be a number, a string, which is simply some text, or a boolean, which is a true or false value. So these are all data types. Now variables are generally initialized in the create event. So we are gonna open that event. Here we are gonna initialize our first variable. This variable will be called a. Now to give it a value, we are gonna write the equal sign. Then we can enter the value which for this variable will be 8. So now we have a variable called a and its value is 8. So we can now use this variable in a function. And for that, we are gonna open the draw event. Here we are gonna use a new function. This function is draw text. With this function, we can simply draw some text. Now down here, we have the arguments. So I'll make the window smaller to bring the arguments closer to the function. Now let's take a look at the arguments. First of all, we have the x and the y where the text will be drawn. And then we have the string that will be drawn. So for the x and the y, we are simply gonna enter x and y. This way the text will be drawn wherever the instance is. Then for the string to be drawn, we are gonna enter our variable a. Now the variable holds a value that is not a string. It's actually a number. And the argument here in the function requires a string. And you know that we are passing in a number. So this number will automatically be converted into a string when you pass it into this function. And now we can run the game and test it. Now on each instance, you see the number 8. And that value is being read from the variable. So this is how you create and read a variable. Now we are gonna see how a variable can be modified after being created. So now we'll modify our variable a in the draw event. So before this line, I'm gonna add this. Here we are changing the value of a to 13. This way you can simply modify a variable anywhere. So now we are gonna run the game and see the effect. Now you can't really see the number because the box is white and the text is white. So we are now gonna go into the project and change the color of the box. Now we are gonna run the game again. And we can see the value now. So this way you can modify a variable whenever you want. Now I'm gonna remove this line. And we are now gonna modify this same variable in the step event. Here we want to increase the value of the variable by 2. So I'm gonna add this here. Now we are setting a to be equal to this expression. The parentheses here are totally optional, but they make the code easier to read. So the expression that we have here is a plus 2. So these values are added together and then the result is applied to a. This way the value of a is increased by 2. Now this is gonna run each frame because we are inside the step event. So we can now run the game and see the effect. And now you can see that the number keeps increasing. And in this way, we can relatively modify a variable. But there is another way to write the same statement. So I'm gonna remove this and add this instead. Now this is gonna do the same thing. It's simply gonna increase a by 2. Now we can change this plus here with a minus to perform a subtraction. And now you can see that the value is going down. Now I'm gonna change this back to plus. So now here we are simply adding 2 to our variable. 
but we can also add another variable to this variable. So in the create event, we are gonna create a new variable just for that. This will be called add and its value will be 10. And now in the step event, we are gonna add the add variable to a. So here a will go up by 10 since the value of the add variable is 10. So let's run the game and see the effect. And now the value is increasing at a very fast rate. And now we can go back to the create event and here change the value of the add variable to something low like 0 0.1. And now when you run the game, you'll see that the value is increasing at a lower rate. So this shows how you can read and modify variables. Now back in the create event, we're gonna create two new variables. So we're gonna create add x and add y. We'll be adding these values to the x and the y of the red circle. So I'll open the draw event and come down to this statement. Now after the x argument here, I'm gonna add this. And then after the y argument, I'll add this. Now this addition won't do anything because the add x and add y variables are zero. So if you run the game, you won't see any difference. So now we'll be giving values to these variables. We'll be doing that in the step event. And here we are actually gonna learn something new about functions. You know that a function performs an action. And you also know that you can pass arguments to a function. And now a function can also return a value. For example, we have a function called random. It takes only one argument called x. What it does is that it gets a random number between 0 and x. So the function returns this random number. And then this return value can be stored in a variable or passed into a function as an argument. So we are gonna use that function here. I'll write the function name and then the parentheses. The argument for this will be 10. So now we are gonna get a random number between 0 and 10. We wanna store the result of this function in a variable. So we can do that like this. So now the random number will be stored in add x. And then it will be added to the x position of this sprite. So now we are gonna run the game and see what happens. And you can see that the circle is basically shaking. This is happening because of the random add x value. And now we can do the same to the add y. I'm gonna pass in 30 as the argument for this function. So it should move more on the y axis. Of course in the draw event, it's added to the y. So let's run the game and see what we have. And now the circle is shaking in both axes. So this shows how a function can be used to set the value of a variable. Now we are gonna learn about some other data types. First we have booleans. Now a boolean can either be true or false. So in the create event, we are gonna create one. So here we have a variable called can draw circle. It's set to true. So a boolean can either be true or it can be false. Now the next data type that we have is a string. A string is simply some text. So now a string can be created like this. First of all, you need these quotation marks. And then the text can go inside them. So now we have a simple text string here. We can now go into the draw event and draw it with a function. I'm gonna use draw text. Now here we have the x and the y where the text will be drawn. So we are simply drawing it at 8 by 8. Now for the string, we are simply passing in this variable. So we are gonna run the game and see what we have. And you can see our string here. All instances are drawing in the same position. And that position is 8 by 8. Now finally, we are gonna learn about comments. 
So we have these two variables here, right? Now without looking at any other events, we wanna know what they do. So for that, we can add a comment. Now you can begin a comment with two forward slashes. And then you can write whatever you want. So this is simply what a comment is. It doesn't affect the code at all. It's only there to explain some code to the programmer. Now in the next lecture, we'll be learning about conditions. And so I'll see you there. Thanks a lot for watching. If you're interested in the course, check out the description. Make sure you subscribe for more tutorials and I'll see you in the next one.